This is the completed setup. The worst possible case of scenario happened. 60 cells, 60 cells, 60 cells. This is 4S, 4S, 4S. I'm charging with 2.8 kilowatts. It's pretty loud. It goes fast. No current going there. It's up. This is not much. I'm getting not even 40 watts. The whole power bank is attached and clamped from the bottom of the car with this aluminum bar. I did not expect things would go the way they went yesterday. And I completely gave up on this van build up until today. Hello everybody, thank you for joining us this week. It's finally time to build a power bank. I've been waiting for this for a long time. We will have all the systems permanently powered. That's a big deal. We can be using the lights inside, we can be lifting the solar panels, we can be using it all. So let's look at the power bank. I'm using eight cells. They're on a bulkier side, on a ratio with the capacity and size, but it's okay, it's good enough for the van build. They're connected with the threaded rods that hold them together and I also use this strap to help me transport them. I'm making them as a three single packs so I can comfortably move them to the floor of the van and connect them actually inside because otherwise it would be impossible to walk around with this 77 kilo <laughs> monster. Look at this, this is individual cells. 60 cells, 60 cells, 60 cells. This is 4S, 4S, 4S. And look, these 15, that's individual cells connected in parallel. That means overall voltage of these is 3.6. This is connecting series together. I'm having 1S, 2S, that means voltage here is already doubled, 7.2 volts. And we go all the way up to 12S configuration. So in between those packs, I need to be connecting the series. Whew. And I'm gonna make sure they are well protected and in protective sleeves before I even can bring this series inside of the car because as one pack, <laughs> there is not a single chance to get them in. I think everything is in a stage where it should be. <laughs> Doing as much as possible before I connect the other two series together. Yeah, so now it needs to go in. Okay, now I need to connect, connect together somehow, rotate, connect them so I can just slide them in. That's the deal now. And a deal is a deal. It's a bit of a hustle to connect all of these packs together. <laughs> I love the wires just long enough to maneuver them around and in this small space connect them together. We always go with a screwdriver and make sure they are all nice and tight. We're obviously using uh, spring washers because <laughs> we don't want to have any loose balls on these. Pavel, Pavel is on the scene helping me with the BMS. You can see a lot of small wires, it might be overwhelming, but it really is a simple principle. Pretty much on every series you have one balancing port, they need to go chronologically from negative to positive. In this last phase, before we lay them down, you, you can see that I have a plastic scrap material, that's actually the original panels from this van, <laughs> that I'm still reusing. I'm marking them, labeling them and cutting the holes for the connecting wires. After the temperature sensor is installed inside, we just mammoth glue them and use a captain tape to secure everything in place and preventing anything short-circuiting this series. The last phase is to just slide it in. It's a bit of a human power and the next phase moves to securing the power bank in there. So I'm using this insulation cut on the right thickness. Wow, that is a tight fit. It's not going anywhere and this, this will also work as a buffer. We'll squash this a little bit, but it doesn't go hard and it's not gonna... 
destroy anything. Battery successfully installed, properly attached to the chassis of the car. BMS installed and set. These wires, that's a mess that needs to be organized later on. BMS seems to be all set, all the values, and I think we are moving towards pressing the on button. Bad one. Pretty awesome to see the lithium in a nominal voltage and seeing actually the cells are pretty well balanced. And that's always a good sign. Hmm? I think we are ready to turn it on and, and we'll see. We're logged into a BMS. We'll see if we have any draw. Ready? Three, two, one. I'm pretty happy to see it. A tam se dá pět světla. Tak je 35 vatů, jasně. Jo, jo, vypně, no. OK, to vypadá dobře. To vypadá dobře. Tak já hned nastavím uh, kontrole. Podíváme se, co dávají soláry třeba takhle pasivně. Time to test the charger. 67 A. 3 kW, 2,8 kW, to jde naplno. I have very improvised conditions with just the extension cable to power the charger and it's awesome. I'm charging with 2.8 kilowatts. It's pretty loud. It goes fast and I'm keeping an eye on how disbalanced the battery is and how the temperature rises. This is pretty awesome that uh, first temperature sensor is in the thinnest place on a bus bar to check exactly how the weakest point uh, heats up. And then we have the second one on an average bus bar spot. Then we have inside of the power bank and outside of the power bank. So that is the most objective uh, measurement we can read on this. 61 amps, 3 kilowatts charger, pretty good. Backstage, everybody. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. It's time to press the magic switch one more time. Initiate the lift. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> I learned much later that actually voltage of the solar panels must be 5 watts higher. So I was just checking the voltage. Oof. If it was not, I would have to change the connection and change them from all parallel to one series. So I think I can turn this on. No current going there. What's up? They're very dirty and I see increase in a in power, that's good too. So I think it's time to watch them and see actually what they are gonna do. Last time how we had to clean our solar panels climbing up, it was impossible. It's always finding something high enough because we didn't have a ladder. We gained 100 watts by washing one of the solar panels. So that's good. There's, there is ambition that it might work out. Wow, I'm pretty disappointed. It's a, it's a summertime, it's a bright daylight, not shaded, we just cleaned the solars and I'm getting not even 40 watts out of theoretical 1000. And also the solars are tilted now. That's been a lot of work to be dealing with this power system. Wow, and now, now I expect it to be a big highlight. Voltage of the solars need to be 5 volts higher than the battery voltage. I didn't know it needs to be higher. So I would I would normally have the panels in series. At least the solar tilts, right? That works still. That's right. It doesn't it hasn't failed yet. Well, I completely did not expect things would go the way they went yesterday, and I completely gave up on this van build. 
up until today. So I researched, I thought about it and I realized I just need to increase the voltage of my solar panels. I have them all in parallel so I'm gonna just change two rows to be in series and in series and connect them together in parallel. But because of that I should have 106 volts in total which is over the limit of my MPPT controller. So on the top of this I also need to buy a new controller. Great design, Lottie. Great job, man. First possible case of scenario happened but now we're over 100 volts so I can't even turn the breaker on and, and see if it charges with one kilowatt or not because this controller is only rated to 100 volts so I guess this one is for sale but at least that makes me happy This is the whole finished setup. A little bit organized cables, everything zip tied and screwed what was necessary to the bag. So nothing rattles, nothing can scratch through. It's safe. The whole power bank fit just enough in this box under the fridge. We'll definitely have to seal the fridge nicely so we don't have any condensation going down, but that's for another chapter. Most importantly, this is upgradable. The easiest way is just to add one or two more series to increase the capacity to 15 kilowatt, just in case we don't have enough. I have the BMS right here, that's a Bluetooth BMS, so connecting through my phone and seeing stats, everything right there. It also has a switch, I'm thinking I might even keep it down here, so maybe for off-season use I can just disconnect the BMS and make sure nothing's gonna drain my battery. Everything is organized beautifully with zip ties and protective sleeves when it's needed. You can see all the individual balancers are again zip tied and wrapped in a protective sleeve. Always checking for sharp corners, that just makes life much easier later on. The whole power bank is attached and clamped from the bottom of the car with this aluminum bar. I used it as a ground at the same time so I can just ground the whole battery right here and it also holds the unit clamped down to the floor. So just in case we have an accident this should hold everything just fine. From the sides we have the insulation working as a buffer so it doesn't have a hard impact just in case of accident and battery packs are also protected with a thin plywood from both sides. I just routed edges to make them nice and smooth so nothing cuts through the battery bank. Pavel also installed four temperature sensors so we have them in the most critical points. So when I was concerned about the thickness of my bus bar that's where I applied one uh, sensor. Then we have one just in general on a, on a flat surface of a bus bar to compare the difference. We also have one in between the packs and the last fourth one is just up here from the top between the power bank and the shelf. So we have the most objective reading I think we can get. <laughs> Apart from the solar panel fail, this seems to be usable setup. We'll see. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate if you spend time with us and if you show interest in what we make. Next, my custom hot water tanks being made. So hopefully we're gonna be installing it next week together with a motor exchanger, super simplified system just because feedback from you guys. So thank you very much and see you next week. Ciao!